In this video, I'm going to do uh, an optimal uh, pricing problem. So uh, I'll, I'll make use of the optimization techniques that we have learned in the uh, previous video. Um, and then we will find out what is the optimal pricing. So the uh, problem is like this. Suppose a company has two competing products. So the company produces two different products. And a customer has two choices, buy product one and buy product two. Same product of different types. So, um, so there is a choice. And we assume that the choices are mutually exclusive. Now, how do the company set the prices of the product so that its profit is maximized? So there is a competition between two different products from the same company. So the competition is internal in nature, it's not external. So the competition can be controlled with uh, selection of suitable price. Now the company has to set uh, you know, suitable price in order to uh, maximize the profit. So this is a profit maximization problem. Now uh, in this case we are going to use uh, some marketing, uh, uh, some pricing uh, you know, literature. So the pricing literature says that the volume that should be produced when you have a competing product should be uh, given by exposure, exposure is just a constant into exponential of minus of alpha into price. So alpha is just a parameter, it's a parameter of uh, price volume model uh, divided by exponential of minus of alpha into price plus um, exponential of minus of beta into Q. So Q and P both are price. So P is the price of say uh, P is the price of say product one, and Q is the price of product two. So the volume that one should produce for um, you know pr uh, sorry the volume that one should uh, produce for product one um, is given by this particular uh, you know product volume formula. Similarly, when we change the to product two. Um, we will just take the beta into here. Okay, so let me write the formula for uh, product two. Okay, so this is volume should be product produced for product one, volume should be for product three two. So I'll just change it to beta, and this is how my equation is going to be. So this is going to be Q. Okay. Uh, now this this formula has come from the literature, so uh, we need to decide what's the value of alpha, uh, what's the value of p and q. Now the value of alpha and beta, uh, these uh, values, the parameter values, uh, you know, we already have been given to us. All we need to know is the volume, volume one and volume two, p and q, and the maximum profit. So these five things are of interest to us, right? The formula could change actually with uh, you know with industry, with different products. The formula will change, but the technique will remain same. The one that we are going to use will remain the same. Few more informations. Profit is always given by revenue minus total cost, right? And how do you find revenue? Revenue is price into volume. And total cost is unit cost into the volume. So using this four, uh, this five uh, formulae, we were going to uh, write an optimization code in order to find out the optimum price of the two products, right? Which maximizes the profit. So that's the condition. So how do we do that? So we are going to write a PROC OPT model. The PROC OPT model is the uh, optimization uh, procedure available in SAS. So the first thing to do is to declare the variables of interest and the uh, different given variables and then we will declare the objective function and finally we are going to solve it. So let's go uh, step by step. So the first variable I am declaring here is alpha which takes a value of 0.05. So that's given. And now this is a number. So we start, we define it as a number. Okay, these are all constant. Sorry, this is not variable, this is constant. Again, the next constant is the beta, which takes a value of 0.1. Then, uh, cost of making an extra product. Okay, for product one, it is 15. For product two, it is 20. The fixed cost of making 
product one. So there is only a fixed cost and an additional cost for every product, right? So the fixed cost for, uh, for making product one is 100 and uh, the fixed cost for product um, for making product two is 120. And the exposure constant is 1000. Again, so ex these are all given. These are all given to us. Okay, so these uh, constants are given to us. But the variables are unknown to us. Okay, so what are the variables? So now let us uh, declare the uh, variables. Okay, so we have got uh, P and Q, the prices of uh, product 1 and 2. So product 1 price is P and product 2 price is Q. Now the constraint here is that this 2 has to take a value of greater than 0. Price cannot be negative, right? We cannot have a negative price. Now we, uh, and, and the other uh, constraints and the uh, constraints are the volumes, the minimum number of products uh, for product 1 should be 130, 1, 130 and the minimum number of uh, product that the product 1 should be produced is the 20. So these are constraints given to us. We cannot have, you know, less, lesser number of products than this. Okay. Above that, what should be the optimum? Or what volume should optimize or maximize the uh, profit? Right? Given this constraint. So there we have got four constraints with us. Right? Now, the uh, profit maximization, as you have seen, is just total volume minus total cost. Right? And volume is given by this formula. So, we just write an imp var. So, imp var keyword, what it does is that when you have a complicated formula and what, what we have already seen that the volume formula is very complicated. So, if you write in a profit function, it's going to take a lot of space, right? right. So, instead what we do is that we just write the volume uh, before uh, the volume formula and store it in uh, V1 and V2, right? And this V1 and V2, we are going to use it in the final profit maximization formula or the objective function, right? If you, I mean, we can, we can as well use this entire portion over here in the place of V1 and V2, but that's going to make it the formula very clumsy. So, for a better look and to make our life simple, we can actually use the IMP var function here, okay? Now, we have got uh, volume 1 and volume 2, the same formula that we have used, uh, I, I just explained before, before writing this code. And then, Finally, we will write the ob objective function. So, objective function is profit, so which is the total revenue and the total cost. So, total revenue is price into the uh, volume. So, unit price into volume, right? So, I don't know what is the, uh, you know, the price of the product, what price should be. That's the variable. I need to know about it. And the uh, Q is the, again, that's a uh, variable as well. Um, I know what is my unit costs. Right, so uh, unit cost in the volume, so I get some total cost and then fixed cost and then unit cost for product 2 into volume. Hello, hello, hi, yeah, hi, Srinivasan, hi, how are you? Yeah. Okay. Right, right. Right, right, right. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, sure, sure. Sure, sure, sure. Over the weekend, we uh, uh, see. I'll be giving you more uh, access to more different study packs, and also in in this in this in this uh, in this weekend, uh, we will have a session, okay, one on one session. No, first thing is that basics, right? You need to know the basics before knowing. Those things are will be very advanced, right? If you want to uh, know how to calculate like uh, simulation, wire calculation, or you know, credit risk modeling, financing forecasting, you will be very, you know. Uh, so first thing is to 
to ha have a basic clear okay and it takes little time okay so let's have the basic right right yeah that's what like logistic regression is important so you just focus on linear and logistic once you are done with this thing we will directly go to the uh, risk analytics okay and, and before that also i am going to give where is uh, the uh, you know access to one of the risk analytics folder you can just go through all these more uh, you know it's very vast actually it's uh, take a lot of time but yeah you can go through these videos and all okay 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 mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. yeah so i have got data set see i have got data sets there i have got data sets so if you can just do one example that will be good because uh, that is more important when you actually you do it yourself that will be good just do an example and send it to me i'll just do the correction and send it to you back and give uh, my feedback okay Yeah. Sure, sure. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, sure, sure. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye. And then we will call the solver which is going to solve for us. So we write solve. So we just call the solver for that. So which is going to optimize the uh, objective function. And finally, we will print the variables. The variable with us is the prices of the two products, the actual quantity that is to be produced, and the maximized profit. What is the maximum profit that we can expect? Right. Now once this is ready, we can just go ahead with the plan. Okay, so let us go to the output. So when you look at the results, first see whether the objective function is uh, maximized or not. And it says the solution set is optimal. Uh, if it is not optimal, then that's an issue. So it has to be optimal all the time, right? And then how many iterations it took? So 18 iterations. So it runs very fast. Um, and then another thing to look at is uh, the objective function value that is 3075. So the maximum profit is 3075.94. Okay, that's that's our objective function, right? Yeah. And the variables of interest, and we can see the optimum value, optimum value of this. So the price of the first product should be 37.32. That's the optimal price. The uh, price of the second product should be 33.44. The volume uh, of the first product should be 130 and the volume of the second product should be 29. Remember that for volume we have a constraint that volume 1 has to be minimum 130 and then volume 2 has to be minimum, one, uh, minimum 20 only, right? So volume uh, 1 is 130, so that's only the constraint values. But volume 2 is uh, more than the constraint value, so it is 29.64 or if we round it up, it, it will be 30, right? So, uh, and the profit, uh, when we have the optimal variables, the optimal profit will be or the maximum profit will be 3075.9 units. Okay. So that's the way we find out uh, the optimal uh, price and volumes of different products. Now this is very useful especially in a case where uh, you know the products uh, are competing uh, you know the competing in nature. For example um, a, um, a, an FMC is a company 
FMCG company generally they have multiple uh, products for the same category. For example, uh, in the case of uh, Unilever, you will have different types of soaps, and they will be competing with each other. Now the same company but different, uh, you know, different uh, products of same type. Um, so they need to come up with an optimal uh, uh, price, uh, which uh, you know maximize the profit. Ensuring that uh, none of the product gets affected by the competition, internal competition. That's important, and that's how we we can have a better strategy. Uh, we can extend this problem to different other problems. You know, not be just limited to price. We can also include have uh, also have volume in place, and then we can we can have multiple products, not just two products. We can have three, four, five, any number of products we can have, and. Uh, um, and, and we can find out the optimal prices of these uh, products. And it need not be similar product. We can even have uh, different products. But the business logic has to be, uh, you know, uh, good in the sense that we have this uh, uh, volume and price uh, model, right? We, we have used here. So we need to look at the literature and find out the relationship between different uh, product the prices and the corresponding volume. Once that is clear with us. Doesn't matter how many number of products are there, how many number of variables are to be found out. It's pretty easy to implement this algorithm and find out the optimal variables. Thank you.